we built an entirely new enrollment system for the Cooperative Lake Monitoring Program this year. Um, part of that is because administration of the MyCorps program has moved over to Michigan State University. And so we have um, had to build a new system. Um, we used to be affiliated with the Great Lakes Commission as one of our partners, and they handled this, this part of the MyCorps program. Um, and they're no, no longer working with us, with us on this. So we built a new system. And what we're really excited about is that once you've created an account in the system, it's going to be a lot like if you use Amazon. Um, once you have your information in the system, your name, your address, your email, you know, all of your contact information, and the lake or lakes that you work on, when you come back every year to re-enroll for the next season, you won't have to provide any of that information. You'll just sign in with your username and password. It will include, it will immediately show you the lake, or if you're on multiple lakes, all the lakes that you have monitored in the past, and you can just click on the lake name, pick your parameters, make your payment, and you're done. So we're really excited about that possibility. But of course, since this is a new system this year, we need everyone to go in and create a user account. So that will be the first step when you get into the system. Um, so you can get to all of this just by going to our homepage, mycore.net, and you'll see a button right there on the homepage that'll take you to CLMP enrollment. And one thing that I wanna point out is that there is, um, what I'm showing you here is our help page and you can, there's a link to the enrollment help right there on mycore.net and you'll be able to see exactly what I'm showing you here. And it steps you through the registration process step-by-step step with screenshots, basically images of each screen that you'll see showing you what to do. So I'm just gonna work my way through this help document that we have for you so you can see the different steps. I'm not gonna go ahead and enroll an imaginary link or anything here. We're just going to step through um, the processes. And if you have questions, again, you can type them into the chat and uh, the rest of the team will keep an eye on those and we'll address them um, at the end. We'll have plenty of time. So one of the first things that I want you all to think about is um, whether you are a lead volunteer or an assisting volunteer. And that's a really important distinction. I suspect that most of you here today are lead volunteers. And what we mean by lead volunteers is you are the person who's going to select the parameters that will be monitored on the lake. You are the person to whom the bottles and sampling equipment will be mailed. And you are the person who will make arrangements for paying the enrollment fees. If that's you, then you're a lead volunteer. And so when you set up your user account and enter your information, it's going to ask you, are you a lead volunteer or an assisting volunteer? And if you're going to be doing all of those things for your lake, select a lead volunteer. There can only be one lead volunteer on a lake. So that's important to keep in mind. We also have the role of assisting volunteer. And that's because on a lot of our lakes, we have a team of folks that go out and help with the monitoring. And we want everybody's you know, contact information. We also require that everyone that's volunteering sign a waiver of liability. And so that's another function um, that's available in the system. So if you're not choosing the parameters, you're not making payments for the lake, you're just helping the team of volunteers on your lake, you're an assisting volunteer, then that's what you would pick when you go in. And when you go in then and say you're an assisting volunteer and you say what lake you're assisting on, the lead volunteer will be notified that you've signed up. Because that's something the lead volunteer wants to know is who that all the people that are helping out have entered their information, have signed that waiver, so they're good to go. So the assisting um, volunteer is a fairly easy process, but it's only for people that aren't making payment or making decisions about the monitoring on the lake. And if you have questions about which one you should choose, you can reach out to us. And that's right here shown out. Um, if you're not sure whether to choose, whether you're a lead volunteer or an assisting volunteer, you can email us right here at mycore at msu.edu and we'll help you figure that out. Um, an important other thing I'll, I'll mention, I've mentioned it once already today, but before we jump in, the enrollment deadline is May 10th. And we know that's a really short window, but there's a reason for that. As you've learned through this morning, and we'll continue to talk about this afternoon with the other parameters, a lot of the monitoring needs to start in mid to late May. So we want to have plenty of time to get your um, sampling bottles, equipment, paperwork, everything to you. Um, so we're asking people to enroll their lakes by May 10th. All right, let's see the process. 
So I'll scroll up here. Step one, sign up for your new CLMP account. This is where you enter your personal information. So you'll go to this link, which is what you'll get to from the button that is right there on the, on the website. You don't have to write this down or anything and click the sign up now button. You'll see two choices, sign into your account. And that's if you've already set up a username and password and sign up now. Now, if you're a long time MyCore volunteer, you may have a data entry username and password that will not work here. You need to set up, everyone needs to set up a new username and password this year. So click sign up now. Then you're gonna create a username and a password just like you would for any other online account you would set up. We ask some additional contact information of you. Um, and then we also ask some demographic information. Um, MSU Extension requires that we ask this, but you are not required to provide it. It's voluntary. Um, you may just need to select, I choose not to provide this information or it'll ask you again and again. So answer that information for us. And then you'll choose your CLMP role. And that's what we just talked about. It's a drop down menu and you simply select, I'm a lead volunteer or I'm an assisting volunteer. And then the final step, um, and here's where you can see that, and it defines again what a lead volunteer is and assisting volunteer. And then the final step will be the waiver. So you'll need to click that button that says view and sign waiver to complete your waiver. And I'll scroll down a little bit so you can see what that will look like. You'll get a little pop-up that comes up and there'll be text. Um, it's our standard. We haven't changed the liability waiver. It's been the same for, for decades. Um, and so we just need you to read that and then sign. And there'll be a box for you to sign. You can't just click a box. You actually have to give your signature. And so for most people, all you need to do is, uh, I think you can see my mouse moving around here. You would just hold down your mouse button and write your name. And it will draw your name right in that box as long as you're holding down that left mouse button. If you have a touch screen, you can use your finger or your stylus to sign in that box. But for most of us like me, I don't have a touch screen. I'm just using a mouse. So I'll just click in that box, hold down my left mouse button and draw my name in there. And it's okay if it's a little sloppy. Um, and then when you're done, you click sign waiver and that will close the waiver button. And then you can hit submit on the main um, account setup page and you'll be all set. You will have now created an account. All right, the second step. The second step is to choose the lakes that you'll be monitoring. And I know most of you are only gonna be monitoring one lake. So we're gonna focus on that first. Um, you'll sign in if, you, if you're asked for your username and password. If, if you're doing it all right away, it'll remember you. Um, and then on, you'll see a page for CLMP Lake Enrollment and Payment. You'll wanna click Start Here. And that's how you add your lakes to your account. You click start here, and that will take you, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, to a find your lake page. And this is the page that some of you this morning were having a little trouble with it loading because it is a big page. It's a big page because it's generating a map of every lake in Michigan. And so it takes a minute for that to load. And if a lot of people are trying to access that at the same time, then it's slowing things down. Um, but be patient, it will work. As I said, several uh, folks have had success. So go to find your lake. Now you can find your lake in a lot of different ways. So I'll scroll a little bit here. This is what you'll see. You can search by your field ID number and our returning volunteers probably know what their field ID number is. So you can just type that in. So you start typing here in this box, the lakes, lake names will start to pop up and you can pick yours. You can also just type in the name of your lake. And again, it will start to show you a list as you start to type in the name. You can also just enter your address um, if you want to just zoom into an area and uh, near, near an address like your home address or your cabin address. And what will happen as you do that is that this map of all the Michigan lakes will zoom in on the lake that you've selected. And once you've selected that lake, the name of that lake will appear down here. It'll say selection. And in this case, the user looked for a lake called Shaw's Lake. And if that's correct, you will hit add this lake to my account. Just hit that button. Simple as that. So I'm gonna back up a little bit again so you can see what those choices will be. 
You can also just go straight to the map and zoom zoom in and out till you find your lake. Um, but for most people, typing in the name or the field ID will probably be the easiest. So as it says here, it describes, click add this lake to my account. Now, if you signed in as a assisting volunteer, you're done. Um, you've given us your um, contact information. You've told us you're an assisting volunteer. You signed your waiver. You picked your lake. You're done. You're all set. If you're a lead volunteer, the system will take you to the next step, which is picking your parameters that you want to monitor for the year. So I'm going to slowly scroll down to that so I don't make you too dizzy. There's that map again. All right. Now for lead volunteers, selecting your parameters. As a lead volunteer, after you select a uh, lake, it will take you automatically to this parameter page. And you'll see a long list of the different parameters. So for example, um, we have all the basic parameters that are for our first time volunteers and experienced volunteers listed at the top of the screen. So you might click on the box that says, yep, I wanna do Secchi disk transparency. You might also wanna do phosphorus. If you need additional materials, you can order those at the bottom of the screen. As you scroll down past all the parameters, you'll see a place to order your chlorophyll sampling kits, chlorophyll refill kits, if you already have a full sampling kit. If you need a Secchi disk, and you can get more than one of these. If you have two people maybe who are gonna be measuring Secchi and you don't wanna share one, um, you can uh, buy two. You can also select to um, order print copy of the individual lake report. Um, Paul went over these individual lake reports that we generate for every lake at the end of the season, and you'll be emailed that electronically and it won't cost you anything. But if you don't have a printer and you really want a hard copy, you can order hard copies here and we'll remember that and we'll mail it to you at the end. Another thing I'll note, it has been mentioned once already today, um, we aren't doing any in-person pickup for equipment this year. Um, everything will be mailed to you. So the shipping costs for Secchi disc, chlorophyll kits, all of that um, are included in the price this year because we're online today and we can't, we can't send it to you through your computer. So once you've made all your choices of parameters and material, you'll see the total start to add up here down at the bottom. You're happy with all your selections, look them over, make sure they're right, then hit confirm. All right, we're gonna roll down here. And when you hit confirm, you're gonna see a window like this, confirm purchase. And it's gonna have a summary of everything that you've ordered. Again, take a look, make sure it looks right. If it doesn't look right to you, just click this start over button, the red start over button. It'll take you back to the previous screen. You can make corrections and get it exactly the way you want. So it, it makes sense to you. When you're happy with it, you can hit pay. And there's one button that's not showing here. There's also an option to have an invoice sent to someone else. And I'll come back to that if you're not the one who's gonna actually pay. But if you are the one who's going to actually pay, you click that pay button and here's what you will see. I'm gonna scroll. There will be a place for you to enter your name and email address. I'm not showing you that there because that's pretty straightforward. And the payment system doesn't pull your email and name from your account on the MyCore website. So you need to enter it again there. And then you have two choices. You can either pay with a credit or debit card, or you can pay directly from a bank account. Now paying directly from a bank account is the option for people who would normally write a check. So first let's look at the credit card payment. And again, it's nice. You'll see a summary of, of what is owed right here on the side. So you can make sure that that looks right to you. So if you decide to pay with a credit or a debit card, let me scroll to that window, you can enter your credit card information here, card number, expiration date, your security code, and your zip or postal code. You hit continue, review your information. As long as it's correct, you can simply hit pay and the transaction will go through. If you decided that you would rather pay directly from a bank account, which is the substitute for mailing us a check, you'll see this window where you enter your account holder name, select whether the account is checking or savings, give that routing number that your bank can provide to you if you don't already have it. It's also on the bottom of your checks if you have a checkbook. Um, enter that account number and write it in again to confirm it. There's a uh, terms and conditions that you have to click, say you agree, 
and then you can continue. And that way it'll come right out of a checking account to prevent you even having to bother to mail in a check. It'll work just like that. And then you'll hit pay. Um, and you will get an e you will see a confirmation that your transaction went through and a receipt will also be emailed to you. So you'll get that email receipt too. And we also get a copy so we know that you've enrolled and paid. Um, so that is how that works. Um, and then if you, you also get a note that says if you want to enroll another lake, for those of you who manage enrollment for multiple lakes, that choice will come up and you'll be able to click there and start right over again add lakes to your account, start here, and you can add more lakes and start, start the whole process over again. All right, I'm gonna back up now about the invoice option. So backing up, sorry about if this makes you feel dizzy, you're gonna go back to this confirm per purchase window. The way the system is built, that was, this picture was taken before we put it in there, but there's another button that will appear next to pay that says share invoice. And all you have to do is click that um, especially this is an important option for those of you who maybe your lake association pays your fees or someone else um, will be writing, you know, making that payment. Click share invoice. You just have to enter your name and contact info or an email address and then enter the email address of the person to whom you want the invoice sent. And they will get an email in their inbox that says, um, if it was me sending it, it says, Joe Lattimore has requested that you pay this invoice for Shaw Lake in the Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program. So it'll be very clear that that's what it's for. They click on that link, it'll take them right into this payment system that we just saw, and they'll be able to, again, pay with credit or debit card or choose a bank account, just like you would have if you would have paid by yourself. All right, we've gone through the whole process. Um, that's all there is to it. Um, I do see, I don't have the chat window open in front of me, but it does look like some, some questions have been coming in. So if there are questions for me, it maybe looks like Eric is gonna pose those for me now. Yeah, yeah, and I answered a couple of them, but I think it might be nice to hear it out too. So um, does the waiver need to be signed every year? Great question, and the answer is yes. Um, a waiver is only good for the current year um, in far, as far as our records. Um, it would be really difficult if, if liability became an issue for us to go back and say, well, they signed a waiver 15 years ago. Um, that wouldn't hold up for us. So we do need to ask you to sign that waiver fresh every year. But the, the nice thing about the electronic system is now you don't have to mail it to us. You can do it right online very easily. All right, next question. Um... It's kind of a clarifying question. Mm -hmm. Do you require assisting volunteers to enroll? We do, and it's partly because of the liability waiver um, question. We just want everyone who participates to be aware of who runs this program, what we are responsible for, and what individual volunteers are responsible for. And if they don't fill out that information and provide that waiver, then um, that information is not necessarily being communicated. The other benefit to it is we always thank every volunteer who participates in the Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program every year um, in our annual report and in other ways. And so it's really great to be able to actually give credit to everybody who helped out. So, um, you know, it, people don't have to sign up as assistants right now. It can be halfway through the summer and you find someone who re is really interested in going out and, and seeing what it's all about and helping out a little bit. They can spend five minutes hopping on the website, signing up as assisting volunteer, doing that waiver, and then, you know, they're in good shape as far as the program's concerned, and then we can, um, you know, give them credit for all the effort that they're putting into the prog program too. Okay. Next question, why is there a charge for SecuDisc enrollment, even though there's no lab work involved? That's a good question. And um, there's other parameters that we have, like Score the Shore and Exotic Plant Watch that don't have lab work. The fees aren't for lab work. In fact, the state of Michigan through Eagle covers the lab fees. Um, what the fees are for is to help defray the overall cost of running the program. All of the technical support that we provide, um, the database maintenance and keeping that going, the continued access to all of that data. Um, in the cases of, of things like, um, like phosphorus, it helps cover for us getting the bottles and things to you and the mailing costs and those kinds of things. But this is you know, a statewide, very large program and it's not without cost. Um, we are lucky that we get a lot of state funding that covers 
I'd have to look, but probably three quarters of the cost of the program, but we really need um, some contributions from the participants to operate at full capacity. Thank you. Um, what if there are youth in the supporting role? Do they need to register as volunteers too? That's a great question. And this program really is designed for adult volunteers. However, um, especially in the lead volunteer role, um, any youth that are involved, um, we would have to have the waiver signed by a parent or guardian um, for their participation. Okay, let's see. I'm still in the pick your lake spin cycle, mm -hmm. which is a great way to say it. Mm -hmm. uh, will it finally load or should I complete it later? I would complete it later. Um, if it's stuck in that spinning mode, just log out, come back later um, and you'll be able to get in there. Um, if you continue to have problems after today, um, you can email us at that mycore at msu.edu if you continue to have problems. And if you are reporting problems with that or any other part of the system, it's actually really helpful if you can, when you're contacting us, not only describe the problem, but let us know um, what device you're using, like a laptop or a phone or a desktop computer, and also what browser you're using. Are you using Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, um, that information will help us get to the bottom of any problems that might continue after this, this busy spurt I think we're getting right now. Yeah. And I'll just say, so Dan has a, a question that's specific for his lake. So Dan, if you could email us, that's a really good question you have. So um, please email Joe and I, and we can uh, work out those details about your field ID. Okay. Next question, my lake was sampled or tested via CLMP in the past. Do I have to use any of the existing information when registering? No. Um, you don't because when you sign up, the information will be for you personally. Um, when you set up that account, um, one piece of information that might be useful is if you know what the field ID number is, um, you'll know that it's the right lake. But that's not necessary. If you find the lake by using the map search or just typing in the lake name, that, that field ID number will show up with it. So it's, it's not even a huge deal that you know what the field ID number is. You don't have to have any of that old information. Okay. Is there a way to find out if there is already someone who is a lead on a lake? Yes. Um, and But there's not a way to look for it necessarily um, on the website, like to find out who that might be. You'd have to contact that us for that. Um, and this, this question actually reminds me of something I didn't mention. And that's if you are signing up this year as an assisting volunteer, when you go to find lakes and add a lake to your account, the only lakes that you'll be able to see are ones where the lead volunteer has already enrolled it for this year. So when a lead volunteer goes in, they'll see all, I don't know, 11,000 lakes that we have in Michigan and they can choose from all of those. But assisting volunteers can only join a lake that a lead volunteer has already enrolled for this year. So you'll see a much smaller list. Perfect. I may need clarification on this, but let's see if it makes, what about the charge for DO and temp? Was this just an example that you presented? Yes, yes. So I didn't show you the whole page of all the parameters because it would have taken up a lot of space. But when you go into that site, you'll see everything. Secchi, phosphorus, chlorophyll, dissolved oxygen, you know, everything we're going to talk about today will be shown as an option. Um, and um, just as an FYI, there's two different charges for DO and um, temperature monitoring. If you want to borrow one of the meters that we own and we can loan it to you, the charge will be $60. Some lakes own their own dissolved oxygen meters because they've been in the program for a while typically. And the charge is less. It's only $30 um, because we're not you know, using our equipment. So um, those two choices will be there for people. Um, it's important though to note that, um, and Tamara is gonna go over this in great detail, that there's only two types of meters that are approved for use. There's a lot of them out there, but for CLMP, there's only two that we approve use of. I would say we have five more minutes for questions, so feel free to um, drop them into the chat so we can uh, answer uh, before, it's, before it's one. Okay, so next question. I'm, I am new to CLMP. 
I did receive a phosphorus test kit mm -hmm. and did the test. Can I enroll in the spring phosphorus test? I'm guessing what you may mean is the summer. Yeah, and actually, let me talk about that. Um, that's a really great point. Um, we sent out an invitation to lakes that have been in spring phosphorus monitoring in the past. Um, we sent out an invitation to let them kind of pre-enroll in spring phosphorus monitoring this year um, because we didn't have the enrollment and payment system ready to go yet that I just showed you. So we did send out bottles to about 150 lakes. Um, and so all of those lakes will need to go into this system now, and they're going to get an email about this early next week. Um, we'll need to go into the system and now officially enroll and pay for spring phosphorus. And when they go to do that, then you can sign up for anything else you want to do. Late summer phosphorus, Secchi disc, score the shore, you can choose um, whatever uh, parameters are available to you, depending on whether you're a first year volunteer or an advanced volunteer. I'll, I'm just gonna, Sharon, uh, it looks like you had a partial uh, comment in question, uh, but it looks like maybe the question didn't make it. So feel free to, um, to resend that so we can ask that question. Also, I just like to highlight that uh, Ralph Bednars, who uh, was a, a team member of CLMP for years, uh, also mentions that these small fees uh, create a buy-in for the volunteers, which you know helps uh, everyone stay involved and, and get um, some good data collection in. Mm -hmm. 